Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we are going to be talking about moral development. Now, if you have not yet watched our lecture on cognitive development, I highly recommend that you watch that lecture first because this, uh, this lecture is going to build upon some of the theories that we discussed last time we were together. Today we're going to focus on two different people and kind of their approach as to why we have certain moral beliefs, uh, why we behave in certain ways. And so the first person that we're going to talk about is a man named Jonathan Haidt. He's still alive and he has this idea of what we call social intuitionist theory. Why do we believe something is morally right and, and morally wrong? Well, according to Haidt, our moral behavior is going to be guided on how it makes us feel, how the situation makes us feel in our gut, our intuition. If we feel something is wrong, then we would likely say it's morally unjust. Whereas if we feel like, well, maybe it's not that bad, then sure, it's okay. It's interesting because in the social intuitionist theory, the justification is made what we call post hoc or after the event has already occurred. Think about that for a moment. In other words, it's not that you are put in a situation and you think to yourself, I wonder what the morally right decision is. Rather, you are put in a situation, you feel a certain way, and your gut tells you this is what you should do. So you have the behavior, and then after the event is over, you can then go back and retroactively justify it because of the emotion itself. Let me kind of explain what we're talking about here. It's possible that you've heard of the, the very famous trolley problem. If you look at that graphic on the left bottom left-hand side, the trolley problem is this idea that there's a runaway trolley. And if you don't do anything at all, you see this trolley barreling down the tracks, it's going to kill five people. It's going to run them over. But you see this happening, you're witnessing it, and you have the ability to pull a lever, divert the trolley, and it will kill one person. And so it's this moral dilemma. There's not a right or wrong answer. That's what makes it a dilemma. And so you think about this and you think, okay, well, what's the right thing to do? What is the morally correct thing to do? And for many people in this situation, they believe the morally right thing to do would be to pull that lever. It's utilitarian. It means saving five lives is better than possibly saving one. Now, of course, the dilemma comes into, well, if you pull the lever, you are directly responsible for killing that one person. But the counter argument to that is, well, not pulling a lever is also a conscious choice. It is also a decision that is made. And so when you're put in this situation, for most, not everyone, the belief is that pulling the lever seems to be the morally right thing to do. But if the morally right thing to do is save five and sacrifice one, then, it, then what are we going to do in this second situation? The second situation is we have this trolley that's barreling down the tracks. It's going to run over five people. And here you are on a bridge about to watch it happen. And there's a man on that bridge. And you could push that man off the bridge, hit the trolley, which stops the trolley, but kills that man, saving the other five people. And sure enough, when psychologists have asked this part of the trolley problem, many people who initially said pulling the lever is morally acceptable, they now say, no way. I can't do it. I couldn't push someone off a bridge. Well, this is fascinating because the math is the same, right? You're killing, you're saving five and killing one. But the second one doesn't feel right. The second one feels murderous. It, see, it feels yucky. And, and so because of this, right, many people say, I couldn't do it. I, I guess I would just watch that trolley run over these five people in the tracks. So this is difficult to explain until we think of it under the lens of the social intuitionist theory. The second one makes us feel worse. It makes us feel bad. And so for many people, not everyone, but for many people, they view that second scenario as being morally wrong, whereas viewing pulling a lever as being morally acceptable. Now, the second person we're going to talk about, if I can get this slide to move over here, is a man named Lawrence Kohlberg. And Lawrence Kohlberg worked at the University of Chicago, and he was curious about moral development, and he was influenced by Jean Piaget. In other words, Kohlberg claims that our moral development is really based off of cognitive development, that if something 
our belief as to whether or not something is morally right or morally wrong is based off what we understand and what we are capable of understanding with our cognition. And so Kohlberg wanted to test this out. And the way that he tested this out is he wrote what's what's famously known as the Heinz Dilemma. And the Heinz Dilemma, I've, I've put it in our class page. And so you can read it word for word for what it, what it looked like. But the gist is there's a man who lives in a village and his wife is really, really sick. And there is a doctor who has developed a drug that believes can cure his wife. But the doctor is charging a lot of money for this drug and Heinz doesn't have the money. And he's tried everything. He's tried every legal possible thing to raise the money and he's still short. And so Heinz is considering breaking into the doctor's office and stealing the drug with the hopes that it might save his wife's life. That's the Heinz dilemma. And what Kohlberg did was he asked that dilemma, or he, he explained that dilemma to tons of people. He asked college students, he asked children, he asked high school students and, and grown adults, and he asked them this, what should Heinz do that would be considered morally right in this situation? And why should he do it? What should he do and why? Now, notice that Kohlberg did not ask these people, what would you do? And that's intentional because when we ask someone, hey, what would you do? Sometimes we give an answer that we think is right, but it's not actually what we would do if we were put in that situation. So Kohlberg asks all of these participants, what do you think Heinz should do in this situation and why should he do it? And that second part's really important because here's the thing. Kohlberg was not overly concerned with whether or not people believed that Heinz should steal the drug. Steal the drug or don't steal the drug, not that important. What is most important is the reasoning. Why should you do it? And what Kohlberg found is with all of these responses, people tend to fall into three stages. Most children fall under what is known as the pre-conventional stage of moral reasoning. And in the pre-conventional moral reasoning stage, the, the reasoning behind it, the justification for behavior, is a desire to avoid punishment. Think about it. We're egocentric in the pre-operational stage of cognitive development. Who are we thinking about? What is our perception? Ourselves. We see the world through our own lens. And so if we're thinking about moral development, that just makes sense pre-operational, pre-conventional, they go together. We're trying to avoid punishment. It doesn't matter if you say steal the drug or not. Some children would say, well, Heinz should definitely steal the drug because he wouldn't want to live without his wife. Think about who the focus is on. The focus is on Heinz. He wouldn't want to live without his wife. Or they might say, well, Heinz shouldn't steal the drug because he could get arrested. He could go to prison. Right? Who's the focus on? The focus is on Heinz. He's trying to avoid getting in trouble, avoiding punishment. And then when children get to around eight years old or so, approximately, as we transition from the pre-operational stage into the concrete stage, then we see this transition from the pre-conventional moral reasoning into the conventional moral reasoning. And it's at this stage that we start to base our morals not on avoiding punishments, but we base our morals on being a good citizen by doing what is quote unquote right, by doing what we believe society thinks we should do. If we ask ourselves, what are morals based on? Many people would say that morals are based on laws of the land. If you break a law, it's immoral. Or maybe they say, well, my morals are not based off necessarily the laws of the land. My morals are based off the laws of my religion. My religion says that I, I shouldn't do X, Y, and Z. And if I do, that's immoral behavior. In either case, whether the law is created by a, a legislation or by a deity, you're trying to fit in and do what's right. That's conventional moral reasoning. And so maybe a child or, a, or let's say a, a middle schooler says that Heinz should steal the drug. And when Kohlberg says, well, why? Why should he steal the drug? And they reply, well, it's his job to protect his wife. Like, that's what you do. If you're a husband and if you can protect your wife, you should. And, and society won't look down upon him. It's, it's his responsibility to look after his family. That's conventional moral reasoning. The focus is not on Heinz himself. The focus is on his role as a husband to protect his wife. Or maybe they say Heinz should not steal the drug. They say, why not? Well, because stealing the drug, the, uh, stealing is wrong, right? It's against the law. 
be careful. The focus is not on the fact that he would get in trouble and be thrown in jail, which is pre-conventional. The focus is simply that stealing is wrong. It's against the law. That's conventional. So if you come across a question, read carefully. What is the focus on? Is it fitting into society or is it avoiding punishment? Because sometimes it can be a little tricky differentiating those two. Don't fall victim to this idea that in one stage you steal a drug and in another stage you don't steal a drug. That's not the point. It's why you would do one of those two actions. And then finally, Kohlberg writes about what's called the post-conventional moral reasoning stage. And frankly, he says, not everyone gets to this point. In order to get to post-conventional moral reasoning, you have to get to the last stage of Piaget's uh, development of cognition, that is formal operations, thinking hypothetically and abstractly. It's in this stage that you think outside the box and you recognize, you know what, my morals are based off my own universal ethical principles of what I believe is right or wrong. And that may go against society. This is a situation where you may something say something like, you know what, I know that according to the law, this is illegal, but that doesn't bother me because I still believe that this is moral behavior. Until just recently, for example, it was illegal for two men or two women to get married. But there were plenty of people in the country that would say, I don't believe that that's immoral at all. Or conversely, now we have um, laws in the United States that two men or, and, or two women can get married, that that's perfectly legal within our country. But there are people who claim that's immoral and it's immoral because it goes against uh, what I believe personally. And so post-conventional moral reasoning is recognizing that we have our own set of universal ethical principles that may or may not align with what society has to say. I hope that that makes sense talking about both uh, Jonathan Haidt and Lawrence Kohlberg. If you have any questions at all, let me know. As always, everyone, best of luck.